Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're going to be talking about simplifying some things and, uh, well, dabbling with a little bit of Tinker's Construct now that it's in here. So, I hope you guys are ready. So, jumping in today, we're going to talk about ways that you can help reduce lag in your world. Plus, Tinker's Construct is now in here. We're going to play around with a little bit of Tinker's Construct, but uh, I want to talk about ways to help reduce lag. Um, so at the moment, I am seeing about 60, anywhere between 50 and 60 FPS. Um, and I 100% I believe that it's all of these, um, these little lights that I have placed everywhere. But also things like this while it's running and several other things while they're running um, also help contribute to that. And I can definitely notice it when I go to places like this, for example. While I'm in here, you can see my FPS has definitely jumped up quite a bit. And this is still a pretty intensive process that's going on in here. Um, lots of particles that happen because of all of this. It's a pretty intensive process going on here. Um, I want to get more things inside compact machines and also label them so we know what we're getting into. Um, there's a neat way that we could, we should be able to label these. Um, I even want to get things like this in here. Batania should easily be able to fit into the largest build, which is this thing. Uh, we would basically have a layer that is going to go right about here or maybe here uh, that giving us a two wide spot underneath everything. We'll have a bunch of grass in here. This should work perfect, right? This is actually, I believe, fully lit up as well and mobs can't spawn in here. So it's a great place to have such thing as a Batania set up in here. You can even cover the walls if you want, if you don't really like the way that they look. Um, so that is a nice thing. So these compact machines are going to be very useful. But like I said, keep... Keep them down to a minimum if you're playing on a server. Um, but like I said, they're going to definitely help. I would I would love to have like a villager trading area that's in one of them. Um, so that's why I've made a bunch of these. These two, however, are already labeled. So I kind of want to, or used up, I want to get a label on them. Um, so I was taking a look at screens. Now there's a couple of different types of screens. Uh, Cyclic has a projector that is a little bit more difficult to kind of hide. Unfortunately, the projector can move up, I think, like two blocks, but you kind of have to, it, it kind of gets in the way. I wish there was a way to like camouflage it, and like make it disappear or whatever. I wish I, I could make it look like some other block. Um, but the projector is pretty nice. It allows you to project text, just like it says. Uh, another good way is going to be with actual screens. And we're for that, we're going to need a screen controller. Um, and this is all done through RF tools or a part of RF tools. It seems RF tools has kind of been broken down into a bunch of different pieces, uh, but we're just gonna use a regular screen here. So let's go ahead and place down a screen here. And as you can see, I placed it wrong. Don't hold shifts. You know what? <laughs> it's It'd be funny if like, this is just how it is. It's just, oh, there it goes. So I placed it right in the center of the block. There we go. So it tells you a little bit about the readme and we're gonna leave it like this for right now. I'm gonna show you, um, as you've just probably seen it going transparent. Um, but we're going to need the screen controller in order for this to run. So let's go ahead and place the screen controller down. And uh, as of right now, I don't need to give it any power, I don't think. Okay, maybe it does need power. So let's hop down here and go ahead and just give it some power. And then it might be able to detect them. Again, and it's not giving me any information, but hopefully it is working. Um, but these, this would be mostly used if um, your screens require your screen modules required power. Uh, for our purpose, um, we can change the color of the text, and this one is going to be our lava gen. So I can change this to lava power gen, and uh, we can change the font. Let's make the font like white, and close that out. And as you can see, it shows up right there. It says Lava Power Gen. Um, now, to move it around, you need blank text to be placed in here. So you will need some more text modules. Um, you can also center it, and you can make the font larger. So as you can see, it, it does fit Lava Power right there. Um, you can make it bright, so that way, even at night, it shows up. And then if you want to make the background invisible, you just click here. And you can see it says lava power. Um, now, for my purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and make some more text modules. So now that I have some text modules, I can plop this open back again. I think if I can, do I need an empty hand? There we go. 
Um, and we're going to move this down a few. I'm going to place like four in its pl uh, above it. And I believe this will move it down. I think I've used this before. Yeah, you can see it has actually moved it down. Can take it down one more. And it's pretty much in the middle. So if that's what you're going for, this is going to be perfect. So you can label it like this is lava power. Um, and I can make it even shorter by actually editing the text and removing gin from it. And have it centered, have it large. You can, like I said, change the color if you don't like that. You can even change the font to true type, which turns it into this looking thing. If you want, there's also vanilla and the default. Um, so, you know, kind of pick and choose. I kind of like, though, having a label above it that's not just a regular sign. So these uh, these signs are pretty cool for that. Um, I am going to need, though, a few more of these screen modules. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Five of them to cover this up. Now, inside here is our sieving automation. So probably just going to name this uh, sieves. So as you can see, I have it labeled and then click and then perfect. So it's just a regular sieving uh, lava power. And then we'll have one like Batania here. And this is going to be a nice way to kind of compact these areas and get some uh, some things going on in them. Um, now, Tinker's Construct. I kind of want to have it, I think, in one of these machines away from the world. Um, but it's, I don't know. We're, we're, we're going to have to see about that. So in the current version that I'm in, Tinker's Construct is in the pack. However, um, the sort of uh, ore unification process that usually goes on has not been fully done, I don't think. So there may be some uh, some issues we encounter, but I can tell you the materials in you book is definitely rocking. Yeah, it's gonna it's telling me it's gonna tell you everything. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This uh this book as of right now, um yeah, it says uh, the second edition of the materials in you surviving the first day and beyond. Sadly, it looks like some pages were lost. Um, I don't know exactly why. I think there's I thought there used to be a way to smelt this book. Like this book may not um, be fully finished with Tinkers, but Tinkers is in here. Like we do have the things to make Tinkers. Uh, we will need to make some patterns. Let's go ahead and make some of those. Let's see, what are patterns? They're just regular oak, right? I might actually be out of like oak. Let's see, dark. we have dark oak. I think I'm gonna make all this stuff out of dark wood actually. That would look kind of cool and, and kind of fit our theme and everything. So we can make uh, this, for example, crafting station. Let's go ahead and make it like so. Actually, the crafting station isn't going to really be a different color, is it? Crafting station and then this with a pattern. Does that change anything? No, that's just by itself. Okay, so crafting station. Um, I think this, for example, can be used with dark oak and we have a tinker station. Then we have a part builder that we can use dark oak on. Um, a part chest, which is going to be definitely useful. Okay, so we have a tinker station. I think this is just about everything we need. A part builder, part builder, tinker station. And we need the final table as well. I think that's about it. I, it's been a while since I've played around with Tinker's Construct. So it's going to be kind of nice to dabble a little bit with it. Let's go ahead and place these down for right now. And if I remember the uh, Tinker Station. Oh, this is the uh, the place where we actually build the, the thing. Okay, so this will be last. Yeah, I thought I was missing a table. So we have the part builder. We need the stencil table. Stencil, right? Actually, I feel like this has kind of been refined a little bit. I don't think that that's how it's set up. Uh, because I was looking at this, I put this in and you just select the pattern and you put the item in. The patterns are already here. So what I'm getting out of this is I guess that you, you don't make the patterns anymore. They're just uh, they're just already here. So, okay. So that's kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and just make a regular pick, right? That's, that's we just make a cobblestone pick, right? So I'm going to need some dark oak and some cobble just to kind of get an idea of how this uh, functions again, because it's been a while, right? 
So if I put this in and I want to make a stick, let's just check here real quick um, to make a pickaxe. We're going to need a pickaxe head binding and we're also going to need a rod. So we'll do wood rod and binding and then we'll do a cobblestone head. Ah, okay. And then we could put the parts in here and then can we access the parts from here? No, we can't. So this is just our storage for those parts. Um, and this right here, we can throw this together in the right order. <laughs> and there we go. We have ourselves a Tinker's pickaxe. Very interesting. So really all you need is these three blocks right here, at least for right now. Um, of course, that's probably going to change as we go forth. But yeah, that's that's us getting started with this. Like we do need the patterns because we use the patterns as we craft the materials. But it's definitely set up a little bit different. It's so it's so good looking back at this stuff and oh, just seeing what it takes to make this. Like to make any of this brick requires seared brick, which requires grout. Man, it's it's crazy. I have missed grout. I you know what I thought I would never say that, but I kind of I kind of missed it. You know, just kind of. Um, so clay blocks, I think we're kind of lacking in the clay department. So I might have to set up some more clay and I could probably just set an automated thing up for this. You know what? We, we should probably just do that. Um, let's go ahead and set up some automated clay. So hopper for that. That's literally just as simple as two hoppers, I believe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and instead of having it where it was at, we're going to place it here. That's going to place water into it. Place this down on the bottom, place this on top, and grab some dust. Place the dust in here, and that should create an automatic clay system, a clay farm. How easy is that? We had the system already there for us. Um, so grout, we gotta get that cooked up, uh, definitely. Get that nice and cooked up there. Um, and I was looking, the, uh, the smeltery is kind of different. So tinkers, and then we go over to the smeltery section. We're actually going to need to make the uh, the seared melter first, which is going to require seared glass, which, I mean, is pretty reminiscent to some of the other stuff. We're also going to need a seared tank. So this says place above a seared tank or heater to fuel uh, because the regular smelter controller, we can't just like jump to because we have to make a seared heater. And then we have to give it four ingots of molten copper in order to make the controller. Now, the other stuff is different, though. So... This is just like, I guess, how we would improve and make the brains of the smeltery. So we do have to start off with a very simple setup first. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, tinkers. I don't mind the mob sounds. They're, they're just dying above us. Let's go ahead and make this thing, which is going to require a little bit of glass. And then that. So we have the seared melter. Let's go ahead and grab a tank. This right here is going to be better than probably using the heater. Um, because I think the heater does have melting limitations. So this is going to be kind of nice to kind of jumpstart that. Um, and we need to place this above the seared tank. Perfect. Um, so back into tinkers. I think a faucet still exists. So yes, we need a seared faucet. And then we're also going to need this guy, a casting basin for right now. Um... And then we need this to be able to get the brains of the controller. Okay. And then we also need copper. So let's grab some copper. Four ingots worth is what it wanted. Um, it should have three slots, as you can see. But we're also going to need lava. So let's grab... Probably get away with the tank. Some sort of tank with... Um, lava in it. We could probably, you know, stuff some lava in here from our factory. Let's grab a bucket. Actually, do we, we probably don't need a bucket. We could probably hook this directly in to our system in here. Let me grab my control here. Inside of our lava power, I bet if we hook into this, yeah, it's gonna fill up real quick. Perfect, so there's some lava. We can head back. Oh, I just love having access to that. And we can use this as a tank. That should be able to fill that up. Looks like it didn't fill it all the way up, but it definitely is filling. Ooh, that was actually pretty quick, too. Melted all three of those ingots. Um, and then, casting basin in the front, faucet, place this inside, and then once we have all four, we cast out, 
And I think that's going to jumpstart us with Tinkers. Yeah. Pretty nice. And I think that sound means it's done. And we now have a smeltery controller. Perfect. So now we can just delete all this because we don't really need it anymore. <laughs> we, uh, I mean, we, we can use the tank, but all we need now is a lot of seared brick. So at this point, now that I have a bit more of the, uh, the Tinker's seared brick, um, we should be able to make some nice brick. At least I think so. Um, I did see that there was a stair, which is kind of cool, like this ladder here, which requires some seared brick itself, which I like this brick. Make a few of those, make a couple of the ladders. That's because that's kind of cool. Um, so we have our controller, we have our seared tank. We're going to need some way to cast out. Let's see, seared drain is going to be that. That requires some copper. Um... We can do, I mean, I think I should, I'll just do one for right now. Uh, one side will be our, our drain. Um, and then, I mean, I guess the rest should just be bricks. Like we can do just several bricks here and just sort of build around this thing. Right. Um, so right here will be our main block. We'll have our drain that'll be on one side or the other place this here. Um, I guess we can place the drain here. I'll have this in the floor, and I guess we choose where it's open by placing this on here. Maybe once the whole thing is complete, it'll, it'll show up. Um, I'm gonna make a casting table, which if I remember correctly, is this recipe? Yes. Casting table will go there. Perfect, looks pretty good so far. Um, and we just need to build around this. And if it's the way that it used to be, we need to clear out the floor by getting a shovel, which I don't have, so I'm going to break it by hand. <laughs> and then we need to just fill the floor in like this. And that will be a completed structure. Right? There we go. That's on. That opened. So now that is working. And a piece of dirt got thrown in there, which we don't want. And then from this point, we can kind of build up. Um, but what I did see was that ladder. So I wanted to test that out. What does this do? Is this like a, a way to get in or like to crawl up to like continue building taller? That's kind of a neat, neat idea. I'm glad that was implemented because I remember like needing to scale this and like, as I was making this taller and taller and I would always run into that issue, right? Where it, I just needed some kind of building block to be able to get up taller. And that works out perfect. Look at this. So we now have a smeltery, but how do we get into some of the other materials and stuff that we're going to need? Um, I think the tinkers, because I, I don't really have a guide for this, right? There's not like a guide for this new version. Um, so this right here, I'm going to go ahead and make this out of Invar. I think that is going to be the best for the situation right now. So for make this Invar. Now I don't exactly know what this does. But I was hoping it was this. Yes. So this right here is our new Tinker's Anvil that is going to give us access to that. So I'm assuming this is only going to work with like um, the heavy metal parts. I know that sounds super hardcore, but um, this is probably how we're going to craft the, uh, the actual metal pieces. Because I would assume that this is not going to allow me to craft like things that are made out of metal, right? Right? It could be completely wrong. And I don't see the hammer and stuff on here. So, yeah, I think this is where it's at. Even though I, I really just want the sword, I think. So in order for this to work, I'm going to need some casts. I'm going to need some gold. Let's go ahead and get some gold in here. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Because we only have two casts that we're making at the moment. Um, and then I'm, I guess we just cast them out like we used to. We place this in here. And then we build a cast from it. I'm hoping that's correct. <laughs> uh, like I said, it's been a little bit. Okay, so there's that cast. So that definitely is how you do it. Cast this. And is it still two? Yes, it's still two ingots worth. Actually, no, it's only one ingot for a cast. Oh, well, that's a lot cheaper than it used to be. How nice is that? Okay, so one ingot per cast. Pretty interesting. Now... I noticed netherite could be smelted down, but there's nothing like 
I, I didn't really notice anything interesting um, as far as like swords go, what to mix and match. We can't make some of the higher tier stuff. Um, but like a vibranium sword, like we could potentially make one of these swords, like an unobtainium sword. I think we might be able to make this. This is going to require soul lava from all the mod, all the mod. I don't know if we can obtain soul lava actually, man. I had my hopes up for that. I mean, because soul lava is, um, it is is found in the nether and i now there is another place where we could potentially find soul lava um we haven't gone to those dimensions yet so that's going to be something kind of out there um so yeah that would require soul lava to be able to melt that down that is something we might actually do um so anyways i kind of got my hopes up on that i need to find something else that i want to cast out as far as a sword goes. So now, unfortunately, I can't do Manulin. Um, Manulin is going to be kind of an unfortunate thing as well because I have yet to get Cobalt. Um, also, stuff like this, the Slime Steel. Um, we can't really do much about uh, the Slime stuff because we are going to actually need a thing called Sky Slime. And we have no way of getting Sky Slime as of yet. Like, they're still working on this. They just kind of put it in here for right now. Um, so yeah, unfortunately we still can't do any of those things. So we're kind of limited with what we can do. I noticed this, I noticed there's like lead, which would give us heavy. Um, silver would give us holy, which would be good against undead mobs. Um, but I'm not really going to be going after any undead mobs or anything like that. Tasty is kind of nice. I just still don't know if we can do that one. Um, Hmm. I mean, Electrum has its own little thing. That's, you know, Getting cobalt, we could get cobalt by putting this in the nether. Um, and we have a chance of getting cobalt. So we might end up trying to do that. Now, I know we're getting close on time, but this looks kind of interesting. We have a wooden pickaxe head that we can make. Um, or actually, I think we can do this with any material that is wooden. So we have two blocks of obsidian. And we can make this uh, our main head. Like we'll, we'll use two blocks of obsidian. Um, we need dark oak. Let's go ahead and grab this and we can make a sword head right here. Or that's, that's stone. I need to put this and make it wood. There we go. Um, so if we place this here, instead of using a cast, we can do it this way. Place two of those in there. Those are going to take a little bit of time for them to cook down. Um, and then I'll figure out something for the actual handle. So I think we're going to make our first actual like tinker's weapon. Um, so let's go ahead and cast this out. This is going to get us, um, I can't remember the exact name of this. It's got a weird name by us casting this out onto this piece of wood. Um, same goes for this. Um, if we show the cast, the Nye, Google translate is telling me to call it Nawlatl. <laughs> Here it is. Nawlatl. I, I don't know. That's, that's what it's telling me it is. So I'm, I'm going with that, but, uh, pretty interesting. I'm also going to do a, uh, a single piece on here that is actually going to be on the stick. Now, um, the reason I'm doing one on the stick is because it gives me a pretty high bonus on attack damage, um, which is kind of nice. Actually one of the highest that we have available as far as materials go, you can see right here, it's going to give us a 1.4 times on the attack damage. Um, which is pretty nice. And lead also has a pretty high attack damage. So I'm trying to go for the highest attack damage here. I don't know how amazing that's going to be. Um, this one also has a, a 1.3 times attack modifier. Um, so let's go ahead and throw this all in here and let's see what we get. Ooh, that's a pretty cool looking sword though. 9.46 attack damage. That is better than diamond. That is better than diamond. It does have a slower speed by slight, very, very, very slight. Negative 10% speed. Um, has three upgrade, or three upgrade slots and uh, one ability slot. And I'm not sure how the ability stuff works with Tinkers. We have a lot to learn with this mod um, as it's still a work in progress. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff that's still in the in the works here. So one of the modifiers I definitely want to put on here is quartz. And I do remember this 
being a really nice thing for swords is to just keep upping this bad boy until this goes all the way up. And as you can see, it says uh, we are out of modifier slots. Um, so I've used up all my modifier slots. Our attack speed has not gone up. Should have probably used some redstone. I think that would help our attack speed, but our ability section is still not, like I, I don't know what actually fills that ability section. Uh, maybe you guys can let me know down in the comment section below. Maybe you guys have had more experience or watch more. Um, I think Darkosto has uh, played around with this mod quite a bit. I don't have a lot of time to watch other content creators. I, I try to watch as often as I can, but I don't really have a lot of time to be able to do that. So um, a lot of this is, comes from just me experiencing the mods themselves. So if you guys have any, in, uh, any information about that, let me know. Cause I'm not really seeing anything in here that is in regards to an ability slot, which it says abilities one. I just don't know. I mean, we can try to attack something. I mean, that inside that one shot that cow. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, it's going to, it has 11 attack damage. It's going to one shot a lot of stuff. Um, pretty decent sword. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's a pretty decent sword. Um, It'll probably be useful against the dragon. We'll see. We'll see what we can do. I may not even use this sword against the dragon. As you can tell, we still need to fight the thing. I'm just kind of taking my time, right? I want to be able to get some of this other stuff done before we start rocking with like, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what the dragon drops. It may drop stuff that gives us creative flight for all I know. Um, I just like getting this stuff done, you know, getting the small things here and there before we can... Uh, really start pushing this pack. But guys, of course, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, and that is going to go to Jennifer Bro. I think I'm saying the last name right. If I'm not, let me know down in the comments if that's you. Anyways, I really do appreciate you. Um, and guys, if you're interested in becoming a Patreon yourself, of course, you can find that link down in the description below. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Of course, if you did, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and also click that subscribe button. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, what's wrong with you if you haven't done it already? Guys, I hope you enjoyed. Of course, I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.